This is a demonstration of the HL Image++ blob analysis tool. In this demonstration, we'll use it to analyze a picture of some pollen grains. With the image open, we'll launch the blob analysis tool. Since the image was already opened and active when we launched the tool, it's automatically selected as the input image. If it hadn't been, or if we wanted to select a different image, we could select it from the drop-down, or activate the desired image and click the input image button. The blob analysis tool gives you the option of selecting a mask image to use to find blobs, or to create a mask image automatically during the blob finding operation. That's what we want to do, so we'll leave the output image empty. Next, we'll open the blob options dialog. Here we can select the minimum and maximum size of blobs we want to find. We can indicate whether to find blobs that are touching the boundary of the image or not, and various other options, such as whether to find blobs that are completely contained within another blob. With our options set, we'll decide how to create the mask image. We can perform automatic thresholding or, for more precise control, use manual thresholding, which is what we'll do. With manual thresholding selected, we move the sliders until the image looks the way we want it. With our threshold set, we'll click Find Blobs, and as you can see, the blobs in the image have been highlighted. Each blob is a freehand ROI that we can use just like any other ROI in HL Image++. We'll click on a blob in the list, and as you can see, it's highlighted in the image. This particular blob is blob number zero, the top one in the list, because we've sorted the blobs by total area, and that's the largest blob. We could have sorted the blobs by other criteria, such as their X position in the image. We'll click Find Blobs again to clear the highlighting, and then if we click Blob 0, you can see that it's this little one over here near the edge of the image. Blob number 1 is this little one up above it, which is centered the next closest to the right edge of the image. But let's go back to sorting by parent area. If I want to delete a blob, I can highlight it by right-clicking it just like any other ROI, and then hit the Delete key on my keyboard. Any blobs that I delete are immediately removed from the blob list. With a blob selected, a variety of different statistics for that blob are shown here. For example, the area of the parent blob, the area of all of its child blobs, and the total of the two, along with its position, average gray value, and a bunch of other statistics. By default, size and position statistics are displayed in pixels, but if we had calibrated the image using the calibration tool, for example to inches or microns, all of the numbers would have been calculated in those calibrated units of measure. If we want to use any of these numbers we've calculated in point-and-click scripts, we go to the Parameter Options dialog, select the statistic you wish to use, click Generate Point-and-Click Script Variable for selected parameter, edit the variable name if desired, and continue on for any other statistics you wish to create point-and-click script variables for. With those options set, we click Find Blobs again, and the point-and-click script variables will be created. Each blob can be used just like any other ROI, for example, we could select a blob, open the histogram tool, and create a histogram of its pixel brightnesses. We'll scale the histogram to show the curve more clearly. Then I'll select some more blobs and add their histograms. Similarly, you could use the blobs with any other tool that uses ROIs. In this example, because of where we set the thresholding values when we found the blobs, this blob has child blobs, but this one down here doesn't have child blobs. Let's say we want to find the child blobs inside this one by changing the thresholding values without losing the child blobs inside blob number zero up there. To do that, we'll delete this blob, draw a rectangular ROI around it, and then in our Blob Creation Options dialog, deselect Delete All Blobs from Group before finding new blobs. That way we can find blobs inside that rectangular ROI without losing the rest of the blobs in the image. Now we'll adjust our manual thresholding values so that the child blobs show up the way we want them, and when we click Find Blobs, you'll see that we found that blob again with its child blobs without losing all the other blobs we'd found in the image before. All of the blobs we found are now listed together in the Blob Analysis tool.